Hey y'all, I'm not quite done reading some of the material I'm working on for future episodes, so I'm coming back with you this week with another nitpick file. This one about uh, the Star Wars originals and the prequels. The ones that have corresponding books, I mean. Because um, when they decided to go for full circle from A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and go full circle by writing and creating Phantom Menace, Clone Wars, and Revenge of the Sith, they went, they didn't create a perfect circle when they went full circle, and there are a lot of things, a lot of differences and discrepancies that I can't be the only one who noticed these things. So let's get started with all of them, all the prequels and all the originals, the non-human characters. Starting with every life form you see at the Moss Eisley Cantina, and the two different aliens fighting side by side with the Rebel, Rebel Alliance, and the Wookiees and the Ewoks, who are a bunch of little badasses, even if they are like cute little teddy bears. Then we go back to the prequels, to Phantom Menace, and we have the Gungans, and the Toydarians, and the Dugs, that are impossible to take seriously, especially Jar Jar Binks and that Gungan King. And then we go into Attack of the Clones, where it kind of, and then later on Revenge of the Sith, where it just looks like Count Dooku and General Grievous are in charge of and hol holding meetings with um, everyone who ever got fired from the Muppet Show. And going back to episode one, one thing that puzzles me is why are Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan so uncharacteristically douchey? They're Jedi Knights, and Jedi Knights are supposed to be patient, stoic, tolerant, compassionate. So why do they bully Jar Jar even if he is a doofus? And why does Obi-Wan dismiss Anakin as another pathetic life form even before meeting him? Next thing I notice, and I'm pretty sure everyone else noticed too, is uh, the night and day difference between Princess Leia's style and Padme's, her mother's. We see uh, in the first three that Leia keeps it relatively simple. Her hair is out of her face and she's usually wearing white. Keeps it relatively simple even when she doesn't have a choice. Padme, it's a whole nother thing. Her hair and her clothes are different in every scene and half the time her outfit looks constricting and her hair looks like it might give her neck pain. And you could chalk it up to, well, Leia was raised on Alderaan, where um, they don't dress like everyone on Naboo. But then you get a look at the Queen of Alderaan, and she's as elaborate as Padme, as far from what we can see. Now on to uh, our favorite parts of the entire Star Wars franchise is the uh, Jedi versus Sith duels. And the prequels, they are flying through the air, like... Kung Fu Masters, making everything fly about with the Force and moving lightning fast with their lightsabers. In the originals, it all looks like slow, methodical sword fighting. Then there's uh, in Re Return of the Jedi versus what actually happened in Revenge of the Sith, Leia's memory of Padme. She died when she was very young. Yeah, for real, only seconds old. So, unless you could uh, chalk it up to force sensitivity, how could you remember anything? Now, I want to get into more of the uh, full circling of Return of the Jedi. First off, I, I admit I do like the upgrading of the audience chamber band from 80s pop to something more alternative, but I can't help but wonder. How many of you lads took one look at Greedo in A New Hope and thought, I bet the females of his species are pretty banging? Well, at least one did. And heretofore, one of the backup singers in the audience chamber band is one. Now, how many of us silently or openly speculated on what the Pit of Sarlacc originally looked like? It's okay to say it. Well, apparently it reached the ears of someone at Lucasfilm, so they changed it. But 
they didn't change it enough because it still looks like someone's butt pipe only with tentacles and a beak. Now here's something I'll bet pissed off a lot of people because it's ludicrous. Changing the Anakin ghost from Sebastian Shaw to Hayden Christensen was uncalled for. It assumes audience stupidity, which is really not a good idea. And I, that's pretty much all I've got for the nitpick file in Star Wars. And in case you're wondering why don't I elaborate into the, the sequels, starting with Force Awakens and everything from then on, I have no books to draw them from, so I've got nothing. Not only that, I'm not so much of a Disney fan. All right, I hope you enjoyed this nitpick festival, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much.